All right, everybody, I'm Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon, The Blackest Heart, and The Lonesome Crown, all published by Simon & Schuster Saga Press. Today, I'm going to be reviewing another novel in my collection with the title The Burning Stone. This one by Deborah Turner Harris. Like I said, I'm doing three novels that are in my collection that all have the same title, The Burning Stone. I don't know why that's such a popular title, but... I've got three of them in my collection, and I'm reviewing each one of them, one after the next. The Burning Stone, and then The Burning Stone by a different author, and then The Burning Stone by even another author. But this one is the one by Deborah Turner Harris. Book one in the Mages of Garillon series. I've got the other two books in the trilogy here, Spiral of Fire and Gauntlet of Malice. This was a trilogy that came out when I was young. I remember when this was in 1987. And, uh, you know, look at that cover, by the way. Look at the cover. I mean, I think if I could go like, can, um, maybe I'll do the entire, maybe I'll do the entire review like this so you don't know who's talking. You know I mean? yeah, anyway. The cover is by a guy named James Warren. He did a lot of science fiction, fantasy, and horror covers back in the 80s. Very good illustrator. Look at the cover, how it, um, it's got the guy's face cropped in half. You know, we've already played around with that a little bit. We've already played around with that a little bit. Who's better looking? Which, which half of my face is better looking now? Anyway, it wraps around to give you this spot the spine with the eye it's very so 80s isn't this so 1980s and then it, it wraps around here great cover you know great cover design i liked it i remember walking i used to um you know and it's got a nice map in it it's got a great character list by the way some great characters in this book and it's got a nice map in it too if i can find the damn thing got a nice map in it Typical fantasy, you know, back in the day when I was a kid in 87, I used to haunt the Barnes and Noble, the, the barn, there wasn't no Barnes and Noble back then. I used to haunt the B. Dalton booksellers in the mall, or the Walden books in the mall. I used to go in there two, three times a week just to see what was new in the fantasy science fiction sections. And uh, I remember the day that I walked in there and um, they had a massive display of this book in trade paperback. So it had come, originally come out in trade paperback, right? And they had this massive display right up front of this book. Like, they were really promoting it. The Tor Books. I think it's Tor Books. Yeah, Tor Books. It was a big, major promotion. And they had this thing just plastered all over that bookstore. And I looked at it, and I was like, oh, man, this looks like the kind of fantasy I would love. So I bought that trade paperback. And I did. I read it, and I loved it. I absolutely loved it. And then the second book came out, um, Gauntlet of Malice. It came out in trade paperback. And despite the bookstore's efforts and Tor Books' efforts, all of these massive displays in the bookstore, all this promotion, the series never really took off like it should have. And it really should have been one of the more popular series in the 80s, but it just kind of fizzled. And so when book three came out, A Spiral of Fire, they didn't even bother with the trade paperback version. They just went straight to the mass market paperback version. So now in my collection, I had a trade paperback of book one and two, and then this tiny. And if you want to know what trade paperback is, trade paperback is the, are these slightly bigger they're like this. They're these slightly bigger paperbacks. You know, this is a trade paperback. So they originally came out in this size. Book one and two came out in this size, and then book three came out in this size. So it was it just it just it didn't look. It was you know publishers. I understand. I mean, I get I get it's a cost saving measure. You know, but you know, my God, you fucked up my whole collection. So then I had to go buy. I had to rebuy them all in mass market paperbacks so they all fit. See what I'm saying? I know you book collectors out there have had the same problem. Anyway, let's talk about the book itself. Like I said, this is straight up 1980s epic fantasy, The Burning Stone. 
fantastic. It's dripping, just dripping with great, great characters. It starts out with Caradoc, and he is a mage hospitaler. He will. It's kind of like he's in magic school, but the magic that they run, it's they 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 have they're they're in possession of these stones. That's why it's called the Burning Stone, right? They're in possession of these stones. Anyone that becomes a mage hospitaler, and the only people that are allowed to wield magic in this community are the hospitalers because they only want the magic used for good in other words they only want magic used for the healing of people in their hospitals that's the only thing that you can use magic for in an ideal world right in an ideal world but this isn't an ideal world because there are some people that are like well i got the magic stones you know i mean and i got the magic in me why do I have to do good with it all the time? Why? I mean, haven't any of you heard of Voldemort in this? Have any of you heard of Sauron? And so, of course, there's the main, the bad guy, the main bad guy, Borthon, who convinces, you know, so our main guy, Caradoc, he lives with his sister, um, Margoth, and he's very protective of his sister. Oh, my God. If you're easily triggered by men going out of their way to be chivalrous. Don't read this book because Caradoc goes out of his way to be chivalrous to his sister and it drives his sister insane because he's like babies. They're both adults, but he's just babysitting her nonstop. And it is annoying to read. It is annoying. He's like, dude, lay off. Your sister can take care of herself. Just back off already. So if you're easily triggered by the patriarchy and if you're easily triggered by extra chivalrous deeds of men that are supposedly well-meaning, but their chivalry comes off as just obnoxious. Don't read this book, because Caradoc's character is just like, dude, dude, knock it off already. And then Margoth has her boyfriend, Surtur, who's the harpist. He's like a bard. You know, typical, you know. she's a, She wants to marry the rock star. You know, she wants to marry the sensitive rock star. And Surtur's a good character, and then we got a lot, we just, this thing is dripping with so many characters. And it's a small book, and it's got like, it's got like a Game of Thrones type cast in it. And each one of them is just great. I love all of these. There's Evelake, the prince that gets kidnapped. There's Caradoc, he's in the mage hospitaler school, kind of like the Hogwarts for the mage hospitalers. And he gets, he, 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 he goes through his test, and early on he gets kicked out of the hospital. Because he's a fire, he's a hothead, he's a... He's a tavern brawler. His sister works in the tavern. And his sister wears the tavern wench outfits with the whole, you know, busts and the, 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 the tight thing and the, and the corsets. And, the and uh, you know, she's getting hit on and her ass slapped by all the tavern patrons. And it spins old Karadak up. And he, so he just beats the fuck out of everybody in the taverns. And the mage hospitalers are like, you know, we're teaching. You, you know, got the magic and, you know, we're using it for to heal people, not... You know, and but he's not using the magic to beat the crap out. He's just using his fist. But they still are like, yeah, man, you ain't suited for this. You ain't suited to be a magician. You can take your, you know, pack up your stuff and hit the road. And it really affects him because he gets kicked out. But this guy, Borthen, realizes that um, Caradoc is probably the most talented of them all. And he's like, well, maybe I can convince this dude to go over to the dark side, right? And that's kind of the main conflict of the story where um, Caradoc is disappointed because he got kicked out of the mage hospitaler school and this Borthen guy is promising him all this other stuff if he just uses his magic for bad and evil and will these guys become the dark lords of the realm and will they just destroy with their magic? That's the, the, pretty much it. And then, uh, you know, and this book is the setup for... Uh, this book is great. This book is great. This book has so many twists and turns. I mean, it's got everything. It's got the sword fights. It's got the magic. It's got the quests and the adventure and the characters you love. It's like, got the, it's like I mean, I mean these, these guys are every bit as relatable as the Wheel of Time characters. I honestly don't know why this didn't take off like it should have. I mean, they certainly promoted the hell out of it back in the 80s, but it just never became one of those classic fantasies. And it really should be because it's that damn good. Deborah Turner Harris did a great job. 
with this and the sub the two the two that followed. Um, it's dope, straight dope. The Burning Stone, one of my many novels with the title Burning Stone that we were reviewing. Uh, what do I give it? Yeah, I give it about an eight point five out of ten.